welcome back with another video okay we are uh, studying transistor operation and different topics around uh, CMOS transistor so we have been studying in detail NMOS transistor and today we are going to learn about PMOS transistor I think I already mentioned PMOS transistor uh, in the case of inverter but uh, yeah still look let's uh, look into it a little bit more and uh, this video will be uh, mostly about it so what I did the picture that you see here what I took at the, the typical picture that I've been explaining for NMOS I just took that and made some modification for PMOS so yeah before you start looking at it yourself and trying to figure it out so please pay attention to what I explain so follow me please so this is the NMOS that we have been studying so far you should be pretty familiar with it now okay oops can i move more no okay i can make it bigger uh so we have n plus n plus which one is source this one or this one this one the one connected to ground that's how you you figure that out because both are n plus even though i put different colors but probably be thinking how to figure out but you always look at which one is connected to ground the uh, the one at uh, lowest potential is uh, source so electrons here and there's p plus material here because of that we want to make uh, electrons flow here okay that is nmos you've been studying it for uh, for some videos now so let's get into pmos so again we have a source and drain um, how we decide about that let's get to that in a minute but the key difference here is you don't have n plus you have p plus regions again think about n mos why we created these regions n plus in the case of n mos why we had p plus material here and why we had electrons here when you think like that now for PMOS key thing is that we want to make holes as the majority carrier and in order of holes are what what charge they have positive right so if you want to gather holes here and uh, remember we don't want to have we want, don't want to have a lot of holes here because we don't want current to flow on this side or this side we want holes only in this channel so this thing rest of the thing should be absence of holes and absence of holes is what type of material n plus so we create an n plus material here but think about that uh, our basic the base material was p plus so we get a silicon and that is we mix um, boron with it in order to make sorry yeah boron with it to make a p plus so entire region is p plus but for in order for and that is fine for n mass we need a p plus here then we create n plus n plus here but for p mass this area need to be n plus you call it n well as well because we created our so you, you need to create an n well here so that you can build a p mass on top of that you understand that for electrons here we create a p plus so absence of electrons for holes here absence of holes is n material okay so hope you got that so we got n material here inside a p material and then for holes here we want to have a portion of of this device with a lot of holes and what is a substance with or what is whatever material is with a lot of holes p plus p plus okay. then in order to attract holes here what kind of uh, voltage you need to apply here negative right so this is not valid oops too big this is not valid you need to apply 
negative voltage so the voltage that you apply here on gate needs to be negative with respect to what you have on source so what we do is we put high voltage on source we connect it to the supply voltage and so is the the connection of this one why you want to put high voltage here or same voltage here because you want to keep this channel as a reverse bias you don't want current to or holes to flow from here to here you only want holes to flow from here here in linear area right so as a result of that holes which are positive charge in linear region you will have an inversion happening here then we will apply a little bit of drain voltage and as a result um, there but important thing what i was saying the vg is negative and threshold voltage is also negative you think about it a little bit um, it's, it's a negative voltage is applied so always think this uh, that compared to p n mass the p mass voltages are negative your threshold voltage will be negative let's say 0.4 volt if this was positive and if you think a little bit about the operation of this one this voltage you know there is is um when it uh, think of that when this voltage is less than so we get to source voltage is more positive than this than transistor um, conducts so i know a little bit confusing but in order to remember this uh, that voltages are all and currents are always negative now why current is negative because holes were gonna move here electrons are moving here but we were saying electron when electron move here current flows this side and which makes sense current goes to the ground here we have higher potential here but holes are moving at this side here positive is this side here positive so we use this one as a reference so we say id is also negative ids is also negative gate to source voltage is negative drain to source voltage is negative because this thing is as high so pmos don't need to get too much worried about it um, pmos just think it's always opposite uh, in term of polarity to nmos because of holes here and in order to make holes all the voltages and everything is opposite direction and source in this case was the one connected to ground in this case source is always a terminal that is connected to supply voltage the higher voltage i hope i'm clear but what you need to remember now and this is where digital world is so cool um that once you understand the basics you once you understand things how voltages high and low work you need to quickly convert that into a simple um binary logic one and logic zero and then everything that you build on top of is is logic one and zero and you never have to worry about all these transistors that's why people designing um, rtl um, micro architecture implementing uh, it in uh, what we call macro architecture and all those things people don't have to worry about these voltages and where is the drain where is source where is p plus where is n mass uh, n plus all they have to worry about is logic one or zero because see p mass just think that p mass when the input p mass is always a bubble here so in case of p mass when there is high voltage at the input it is open it doesn't conduct so switch is open and when this one is logic zero low voltage which is zero volt is connected so for pmos when there is zero it conducts when there's one it doesn't conduct in case of n mos when there is one it conducts 
I mean, was zero, it doesn't. So this open, this closes, and this closes, this open. So this is why this is called complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Complementary because they are always, the circuit is built, um, the inverter that I've already explained. Thus every circuit, every digital logic is implemented with NMOS and BMOS. There's always complementary type of logic functions there. So C, complementary, M, metal. Now, I've been talking about that this gate is made of polysilicon. Okay, what is poly? Um, this this crystal at the pure what we get as a silicon and the uh, that we start with is a monocrystal but this one is polycrystal polycrystal like um, it's not as uh, regular as as this one in a single crystal this one it has a different grains of crystals you know what I mean um, so this is metal and before you know polysilicon and again I've started intentionally talking about 180 nanometer to 50 uh, nanometer devices so that I can gradually come down to what we ha have in today's world uh, but at that time polysilicon was used for the gate and prior to that it was used to be a metal gate so that's why guys complementary metal and oxide is here oxide and S is the semiconductor material that's the name of CMOS. That's why I call a CMOS technology, as opposed to BJT or other technologies, a pure NMOS, for example. Okay. All right. This NMOS you have already so studied. I've already explained in one of the previous videos. It's inverting function, and that is because of NMOS and PMOS, uh, the way they work. Uh, when is one is zero, one it disconducts and zero disconducts because of that so i'm not gonna get into details but what i do want to spend a little bit time is this 250 nanometer intel technology i know i started with 180 nanometer but i think when i was talking about 180 nanometer i was thinking of 250 nanometer so i will look at my video again where i explain 180 nanometer and correct things uh, if i messed up anything but let's start with 250 nanometer and I think it makes sense instead of I tell you, if I tell you only uh, 250 nanometer and don't talk about the latest technology, you might not understand things. Um, and if I directly go to the latest transistor and don't explain these technology nodes where most of the books are written uh, are around these large technology nodes. And it's important because some of the basic core theory uh, is important and that theory kind of evolve or the uh, concepts evolve or engineering of the transistor evolve over time so sometimes it's not possible to look at one thing and understand it you need to look at some of the previous generation so i personally believe we might have to spend a little bit of time going from 250 then 180 then 130 90 65 45 32 um, 14 and new kind of devices um, my goal is maybe in future videos I maybe create two three videos around that scaling thing so that things are easy to understand but I think at the moment um, it's good for students to understand the basic concepts instead of getting too complicated with the latest technology 250 nanometer 180 130 nanometers are good technologies to look at so this information I took from an Intel 250 nanometer uh, paper that they published and this technology came in towards the 1998 1999 time frame but it's it's important it's it's good to understand this one so this is their picture of the pmos and nmos transistor now you see here that they first take a p plus substrate it's the very first step then they create STI, shallow trench uh, isolation. And they, they really create those trenches here. Once they create trenches, they fill them with uh, silicon dioxide insulator. Then between these trenches, they create these wells. 
Okay, for PMOS, they create a annual. For NMOS, they create a PVAL. Then after that, they create this silicon dioxide over here, the white. And this silicon dioxide, I put there for 250 nanometer is 40, about 40 angstrom. And if you want to convert in nanometer, is 4 nanometer thickness of this thing. That's what I'm talking about. This is 4 nanometer. It, we need to pay attention to that as, as we scale down what happens with that silicon dioxide. But even at 250 nanometer, silicon dioxide was already at 4 nanometer. Then they, there are some of the things you might, I haven't explained so far. Um, so after they create, I'll come to those in so silicon dioxide where I left. Okay, after that we, they create this, um, I don't know what they call N plus or P plus, but this basically is the polysilicon gate. I just copied this picture and put some colors on top of that. And then after that, they create these diffusion regions, not the black, diffusion regions. Okay, so I had a call. So they create those regions and you see that the region is you know a little bit different shape than i was explaining to you i intentionally put a darker brown the brown yes here or orange and then light colors here so this is called lightly doped drain i mean even though it both source and drain happen they call it ldd so this thing here LDD and then as an larger extension these are heavy doped N plus for the case of N mass and the case P mass these are P plus heavy doped why they create though this is for to address some of the short channel effects that I will explain in a separate video so they create that and then these are also created if you look at these areas are um, what is it called these uh, silicon nitrides they create here in order to create these LDDs so they create LDDs um, with this one and then they create source and drain and uh, one other thing they put this black thing that is shown here this is a titanium silicide eventually I haven't gone into interconnect yet but what happens is we need to connect transistors together so and that's where the metal connection come into the picture and this black thing is uh, because we connect a metal like aluminium um, to the uh, these diffusion regions source and drain and gate and their resistivity is not good um, high resistance so these are created in order to create a low resistance pass to these I'll talk about those in the interconnect uh, video but just wanted to uh, give you um, a higher level um, idea of how an actual 250 nanometer uh, transistor was built by Intel a while back okay hope this discussion was useful and you learned something uh, new here um, yeah keep watching these ones and if you don't understand something go back and watch again and feel free to ask me a question better if you send me a message on LinkedIn. Thank you so much.